coming up. The popularity of the breed's never been better. It's an exciting time to be a short run breeder. That durability was standing the test of time, and just even as trends and fads have changed, short run cattle have been able to adapt. For over 150 years, America's first beef breed, Shorthorn, has been an important part of the beef industry. Next on The American Rancher. Welcome to the American Rancher. Today we feature America's first beef breed, Shorthorns. For more than 150 years, Shorthorn cattle have been an integral part of America's story and the beef business. America's oldest breed association and its members continue to deliver genetics that matter to the industry. With a surge in membership paired with ongoing genomic projects, the American Shorthorn Association is expanding its already strong database to improve the traits the breed is best known for, an optimal blend of carcass quality and maternal excellence. We begin in central Kansas at a Shorthorn ranch named Loving Farms. Scott Loving, we're at Loving Farms here at Pawnee Rock, Kansas. We're right in the middle, uh, central part of the state of Kansas. That Loving Farms is uh, owned by the Loving family, myself and my wife, and my mom and dad, Marty and Karen Loving. Loving Farms started in the cattle business in the early 1950s with the Shorthorns uh, coming into the operation in the mid-1950s and been a mainstay here at Loving Farms ever since. Loving Farms, we're solely focused on producing bulls and replacement females for the commercial cattle industry. We uh, not only know that we've got to have a really strong maternal cow base, but they've got to be efficient on feed and they've got to be of high carcass merit. And that's what not only our customer requires, but that's what we need to have a profitable cow herd here. One of the things that we really pride ourselves on being in the shorthorn business as well as the beef industry is having a breed of cattle that is adaptable to its environment, whether you're in short grass country where we're at or whether you're east coast or on the west coast or high elevation, the shorthorn breed of cattle will adapt to that situation. I also think from a point of creating a good consistent product for our consumer. Shorthorn breed does a really good job of that. I think it's a source of pride for us that you can go out and you can have a cow herd that will provide for our family, but produce a product that can go out to the consumer that is wholesome and useful to them as well. We're seeing that higher feed efficiency genetics um, return higher reproductively efficient cows, and I think that's a nice side benefit to the feed efficiency piece. I think by doing the things that we've done over our history, continue to evolve and progress with the genetics and meeting customer needs, that Loving Farms will continue to be here. All the bulls are raised on a high forage diet. Uh, we try to keep them in a place where we, they get plenty of exercise, so when they leave the farm, they're ready to go out and do a lot of work and stay in condition. As part of our customer service on selling bulls, we also purchase back, um, and we have operations that purchase back feeder cattle, the calves that come from our genetics. And what we've seen in that is, is carcass quality has been excellent, even when you get to more terminal breeds we're maintaining a high level of percent choice and percent prime quality grades. And so there's no drop off in using shorthorn genetics. Um, in fact, it enhances that carcass quality. I think a lot of our customers are looking for that second or maybe in some cases third breed to bring more maternal ability and not sacrifice what they've gained in terms of terminal aspects into their operations. And so. One thing the shorthorn breed does really well is combine the maternal end without sacrificing carcass quality. We've been able to maintain and in a lot of cases increase carcass quality in the purebred shorthorns 
in our composite program, we've seen the Angus shorthorn genetics really work and complement each other well in terms of the cows stay very maternal, um, carcass quality grade uh, continues to go up, percent primes have gone up. And there again, we're just testing the thought process of what's going to happen when these cattle go out into our customers' herds so we can kind of get more predictability in what the shorthorn breed is going to do in a commercial environment. The one thing that we've heard a lot of in the last year is that weaning weights have increased on predominantly single breed commercial herds. And specifically, we've in some cases have heard 100 to 150 pounds difference in weaning weights year over year once the shorthorn genetics get into that system. And that's really rewarding to hear. It makes us know that we're putting out a product that is gonna not only enhance the cow base for these commercial operators, but their final product is of more value. Since 2016, more than 100 Loving Farms cows and all active herd sires have been recognized by the American Shorthorn Association for exceptional performance. Loving Farms will host its annual bull and female sale March 4th. See the full offering at lovingfarms.com. After the break... Our clients have been very satisfied with the replacements that they've been able to generate out of walk root bulls. We visit with some of America's shorthorn breeders and a farm dedicated to serious cattle for serious cattlemen when the American Rancher continues. Welcome back to the American Rancher. The American Shorthorn Association recently celebrated 150 years in America. It was way back then that the nation's very first beef cattle breed was imported from Scotland. And there are good reasons why the association's stronger than ever today. I think they're beautiful. Bought my first one in 1972. Tremendous hybrid vigor. We knew that's what we wanted. Temperament is becoming a, a big thing in the, in the nation's cow herd, and shorthorns will excel at that. Uh, their mothering ability, their milking ability, and then the added bonus is the, the carcass traits. When you step back and think about your operational goals and what you're trying to get out of your cow herd, and are you, you start selecting for the certain traits you want to excel in, I think you're going to be able to find that shorthorns not only excel in maternal traits and carcass tra traits, but they're just dual purpose cattle that can survive in any terrain, in any environment, and they're going to perform well for you. They bring so, so many things to the table. Longevity is a big thing, I think. Very good mothers, their, their temperament, and the meat quality. I mean, shorthorn meat is awesome. They're, uh, you know, much easier to handle than most cattle I've worked with. When commercial producers are making genetic decisions, you know, considering shorthorns as another British breed that they can incorporate into their operation, there's just a lot of strengths that our breed can offer from the maternal side to carcass quality and also just to being a calm breed with, you know, make them easy to handle and that's important when producers are working cattle and just with children being involved and all the other advantages that that provides too. popularity of the breed in my, in my lifetime has never been better than it is today, and it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be a short-run breeder. They're great maternally, they're great milkers, and they're great beef cows. I mean, they show that in production all the time. They, you know, produce more beef, have better productivity, and they have greater marbling. You could probably gain a, maybe 100 pounds in weaning weight by using the same quality of a bull of another breed. And, and the maternal traits of the shorthorn breed along with the carcass merit and docility, I think are all real positive things that can have a positive impact on the bottom line for any commercial producer. Their disposition is always, uh, always good. Uh, their, their temperament and uh, the kids that show them love short horns. You don't bring in bad traits. You bring in traits 
of docility, which is a big deal. That cuts down on injuries with you and staff that might be working with you, as well as how the cattle themselves perform. Especially in terms of carcass quality and having that short horn influence into those, we're going to be able to produce really good cattle. We're going to be able to have a product that our consumers want. And I just think the short horns are going to do such a great, uh, play a major role in terms of heterosis and increasing that as the industry continues to progress. You couldn't envision working with cattle that don't milk after you've been around short horns that, that milk and mother their, their young as well as they do. And then to top it all off with, being able to feed in the feedlot and grade and yield the way they do, that's why I love them. They're their complete package. That durability that we have shown was standing the test of time and just even as trends and fads have changed, shorter and cattle have been able to adapt and to meet the needs of cattlemen. And so that really shows the strength of our breed and our members. They just offer more great things to the beef industry than any other breed all put together uh, as far as fertility and growth and meat quality and you know docility and just general cow traits, uh, good, great maternal instincts. There's some pride in the fact that I still get to raise the same cows that my great, great grandfather got to raise. There's a lot of demand and it's because good things are happening big ribeyes and great IMF with very modest amounts of feed intake. I don't think there's anything about the shorthorn breed that doesn't make me proud. To me, a shorthorn cow is the perfect cow. It's no wonder why so many ranchers are turning to shorthorn genetics to improve their own herds. Next, we're on to the winner of the National Shorthorn Female Pin Show at the 2022 Cattlemen's Congress. Here's a look at Wakaroo Farms, a premier shorthorn operation in Northwest Indiana. Well, Wakaroo um, is the name that we, the family took for this farm in the late 60s. But uh, our family's been here at this place since the turn of the century. My great grandfather um, started using shorthorn genetics in 1902. And since then, um, those cattle have always been part of the operation alongside of um, some row crops. Um, this is a, you know, a farming area, but we do have some lands that are more suitable uh, for grazing than, than row crop. Um, now that's grown to about 200 brood cows, and my children and my brother's children would be the sixth generation that, that uh, works this farm. When my great-grandfather um, was putting cows together, he would have had Angus, Hereford, and Shorehorn. You know, there's times in our history that the cattle were used to, to um, produce milk and butter to get us through some tough times. No matter what we did as a family, the shorehorn cattle always rose to the top and would, um, they would sur not just survive, but they would excel in those different selection times. The Angus cattle were eliminated, as well the Herefords um, back in the 1920s and 30s, and, and it's always been a straight shorehorn operation since. Er, in the early days, um, we were ones that were trying to add growth and muscle. Um, we feel like we have a, a, a genetic resource here in the cow herd that can provide um, necessary performance um, for producers. Um, but we've always maintained a philosophy of making sure the cattle were very sound and correct. And as the type of, has changed, those traits have always been kind of our, our fall back on fundamentals. Um, I think today the cattle are more useful than ever before, uh, more body, more rib, easier fleshing than they've ever have been, and, and still have the carcass traits that have been bred in for so many decades. Uh, the Short Association moved their um, data analysis into the IGS program so we can compare our data uh, with, with many other breeds in the country, including Red Angus and Simital Limousine. Um, by compiling all that information into one spot, that's made our information here at Wakaroo even more meaningful, more reliable, more predictable. We're, we're really confident that the numbers that we have on our cattle here at Wakaroo do an excellent job of predicting the, the necessary outcome for each specific trait. Uh, the calving ease numbers, the growth numbers, um, really line the cattle up well, and we rely on them tremendously. 
our cow herd is primarily solid red and pulled. And uh, we do that on purpose to make for a more uniform calf crop. Uh, the resulting calf crop um, with our walk root bulls on the commercial cows uh, produce steer calves that outweigh um, their predecessors and a, a female uh, resource to bring back to the ranch or farm that has a better temperament, more longevity, and a little more power. Uh, the, our clients have been very satisfied with the replacements that they've been able to generate out of walk root bulls. Well, we're really excited about this group of bulls that will be selling on March 18th. Uh, 60 purebred shorthorn bulls uh, from some of the cow families that uh, have been at Wakaroo for 60 and 70 years. Uh, and we have some um, bulls that will be sired by new outside sires that we're really excited about, but also out of some of the proven genetics that we've um, been working with for quite some time. Over 40% of the bulls would rank in the top 15% of the breed for calving Easter egg. So over 40% of the bulls would be safe for heifers. 75% of the offering is in the top 15% for the British Maternal Index, an index that we use to help determine which ones we want to keep the most daughters out of. On top of that, 70% uh, of the offering would be in the top 15% of the breed for stability. So these bulls will have longevity and there will be daughters that will be in the ranch producing for, very, for a very long time. Uh, these bulls will all be tested here on the farm and uh, complete performance information and genomically enhanced EPDs will be provided. We invite you to the farm in Rensselaer, Indiana to view them live. And if not, um, we will be utilizing smart auctions as an uh, online bidding platform. And, and bids can be placed there or through any of us here at Walkeroo. Uh, and, uh, videos can be found at walkeroo.net, but uh, this is a, a pretty powerful set we're really excited to offer. Walkeroo Farms, the gathering bull sale is March 18th. Find out more at walkeroo.net. Up next. They're a great breed for kids to get started with in 4-H in terms of docility, and more importantly, they're a great breed for any commercial producer to have. Commercial cattlemen choose the shorthorn breed for many reasons, and we hear just a few of them after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the American Rancher. The shorthorn breed of cattle is undeniably docile. They have excellent maternal instinct, and you can't find a better breed that maximizes heterosis in a crossbreeding system. These are only some of the reasons to consider shorthorns as your go-to breed. Here are a few ranchers who can't say enough good things about their beef breed of choice. Shorthorns are what made me love the industry. It was kind of the spark that struck the match of passion within me for the livestock industry was the shorthorn breed. To us, the shorthorn breed has meant family. Uh, really, it's uh, what has kept our family close, kept our family active. We enjoy working together out here. That close working relationship, that discussion of what we want to accomplish is valuable to me. We try to raise livestock that are low maintenance, real sound on breeding, calving ease, growth, structure. Shorthorns are very adaptable. They seem to do really well in the Midwest, but they do great where we are. They tolerate the heat, they tolerate the cold. Shorthorn cattle are ideal for the beef industry because they cover the whole gamut. They are a versatile breed. They obviously show very well. They're easy fleshing, they marble well, they improve carcass qualities. Truly find the value in the cattle in terms of their maternal ability, their marbling ability, their docility. You know, they're going to lay down half calves, raise calves, produce heavy calves at weaning. If you take them on the commercial side, they're going to have adequate marbling and then also have be very high cutability kind of cattle, so they're very productive in the feed yard as well. We know they're easy to work with, they're easy going cattle, and people can see that. We want them to come and see. Uh, and interact with the animals as, as we do every day because I think it's a really good selling point for the cattle. Every cow on this place I can walk up to when they're here, scratch them, feed them. They're just, there's nothing wild about a shorthorn cow. 
We are a family-oriented breed, but we're a business breed at the same time. They're a great breed for kids to get started with in 4-H in terms of docility, and more importantly, they're a great breed for any commercial producer to have. Shorns actually marble really well, which a lot of people don't realize. But then on top of that also, the docility uh, really ties into tenderness, and so that allows for a higher quality product that people really appreciate. You know, if you're strictly commercial, you need to be crossbreeding. And, you know, there's a lot of really good Hereford Angus cows. And if you have a Hereford Angus cow, if you breed her back to an Angus bull, you're going to lose some heterosis. If you breed her back to a Hereford bull, you're going to lose some heterosis. You breed her back to a shorthorn bull, you're going to maximize the heterosis on the three breed cross. They're still going to be all British, and you're going to maintain all those traits that are important to you. The shorthorn breed has done such a good job in recent years keeping track of genetics. Dad and I talk about all the time utilizing our purebred genetic gene pool to optimize on heterosis and complementarity. Well, I think the association is very important. They are always looking at new programs to measure these cattle, to put them up against other cattle, to evaluate them. There's no question adding in the feed intake and strengthening the, the carcass data that they have will really help move the shorthorn breed forward. Uh, there's some outstanding people in this breed that work very hard, are very dedicated to improving it, but maintaining its strengths as well. The people within the shorthorn breed are like a family. That's one of the reasons why we are so passionate about the breed, because we're passionate about the people in the breed. You know, we have so many things going on in our lives every day, and when I can enjoy just walking amongst the cattle, and knowing that they're providing for our family, that's, that's fun. The most important job we have as ranchers is to take care of the land that we're on and to produce food for the world. And that really is a very important task and we, we see our role as being part of that. And there you have it. The shorthorn breed is ideal for better beef. And the American Shorthorn Association is performance with purpose. You can learn more about the association at shorthorn.org. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.